We're in Dubai to test the boat that was designed and built here in the Emirates. This is Oryx 379, a model that gives rise to a new generation for this brand. Oryx is one of the brands of Gulfcraft, and the new generation Oryx will have bigger and smaller models than this 379. Luxury and speed are the key to success of many high-end sports cars, and the same philosophy was adopted for this yacht. It's an 11 and a half meter long open yacht showcasing its engines, three outboard 300 horsepower Mercury engines, and has a technological pilot position from thrust levers to chairs. This highly technical look is combined with the very elegant setting. Its profile showcases original windows on the side, designed with beautiful symmetry. The crystal windshield is designed to deflect the air and protect the cockpit properly. The T-top at certain latitudes is necessary to shelter from the sun or protect you from bad weather. It's supported by an aluminium structure which seems to go across the roof, but it's only for aesthetic effect. On the quarter deck, there is a sun deck surrounded by handrails useful for when you are lying down and when you want to move around the deck. The cockpit is traditional with regular shapes but provides plenty of space when you're seated. And the driving seats are swivel seats. At times designers go out of their way to showcase impractical lines and effects but here they manage to achieve everything that you truly need – space, comfort, accessories. Under the sun deck in the hull, there's room for two inboard-outboard engines. There isn't a bathing stepladder and you arrive at the bathing area by going through two long corridors. What we've seen so far is interesting, but what we're about to discover is even more important. Below this 11 and a half meter long deck, there is a perfect cruiser for two couples. If you're a couple, you could use the dinette this way, two sofas and a table in the middle. From here you can enjoy the sea view, you can watch TV from any seat, and you can use the aft cabin to stay overnight. It's completely furnished and has windows. If you have children or guests, you can book the bunk bed under the dunnage for them, and you can transform the dinette this way, with the double bed. The furniture and the wall that separates the bathroom are made bearing in mind the same essence. Look at how the kitchen is organised, cabinets up and down. The bathroom is counter-moulded for maximum practicality. You need to know that this is a prototype and future models will provide even more space and height on the inside because they've lowered the dunnage. The list of accessories is endless and provides everything you could ask for from a high-level yacht, including a gyroscopic stabiliser. These armchairs are adjustable. You can place them closer or further from the helm and, above all, they're cushioned. Well, the manufacturer decided to let you steer in a comfortable manner. At the stern, we have three outboard Mercury Pro XS engines, 300 horsepower, for a total of 900 horsepower. We begin to sail, bringing it on the plane with Dubai in the background. Twelve knots, 3,000 RPM, 60 litre consumption, we're already in plane position. 
su uno scafo di questa dimensione e ancora più su scafi più piccoli. On a hull of this size and even more on smaller hulls, it's important to have maximum waterline length and they've obtained it with almost vertical sides. The advantage is greater longitudinal stability and higher performance. The windshield is not only beautiful, for the moment it protects quite well. The T-top is rather light and therefore does not influence the barry center too much. Since we're talking about weight, this is the prototype, the first model they've built, and we wanted to test it immediately. Future models will be better because they'll be two tons lighter, as they'll be made using vacuum resin infusion. We check the performance in this situation as well, then the results will be even better. We're at 20 knots, 3,800 RPM, 110 liters per hour. At 30 knots, the stroke angle of the hull is reduced and becomes idle. In terms of speed and consumption, we're at 4,400 RPM, 140 liters an hour. We're going much faster than before and consumption is even lower. They built a hull so as to provide a lot of space to interior sections, but they didn't forget the importance of sailing work, and the dead rise at the stern is 18 degrees. This boat can also be steered by two people, like yachts used for racing, because with this central console you can entrust the throttle to your pilot. There's some racing DNA in this one, because the faster you accelerate it, the better you can steer it. We're at 36 knots, 5,000 RPM. I don't have to do anything. I don't even have to correct the trim. I'm always in the lowest position with engines attached to the transom. I get to 40 knots and I begin to test it while turning. A slow approach for starters. Pivot turn. There are some waves here, but I don't feel the impact of the blades. Very, very good. have such fierce engines, you can hear them. We need to try them while speeding up too. Let's go. 20, 25, 30, 35. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cozy, comfortable, but fast yacht. How fast does it go? We're jumping a bit across the waves, but we're not hitting them. So the water lines are just right. The blades must have been in the right incline and right size. And in the meantime, we're at 44 knots. Now, think about the fact that we have a full tank and also two tons of fiberglass that makes the difference between hand layup lamination and vacuum infusion. So I think that the final model of this Oryx 379 could reach 50 knots. Per provarla siamo venuti a Dubai, ma visto il suo design, viste le sue... We came to Dubai to test it, but given its design, its performance and comfort, well, I think we'll see it in other marinas around the world. Altre marine nel mondo.
So the Oryx, uh, from, since its inception, it started as a revolution internally in the company with something completely new. And uh, the 379 today uh, kind of continues in that legacy. So the, the most important thing about it is that we, we, we're trying to, most importantly, build something that we've not seen before in the market. You know, give something that, that's, um, we wanted to start with a blank slate, basically, and see what, how people use the boat and what's the best uh, functionality, basically. So the idea from the beginning with the, with the conception of this boat was to have something uh, entirely unique. Uh, we, it wasn't enough to just do like this or do like that. We wanted something that wasn't available on the market. You know, something that, that, that people could really have, take pride in, this is my boat, this is, you know, people, something to show off. At the end, it's a toy.